And once in a while, uh, my friends and I would go to New Orleans. It was always a big deal because it was like going to, you know, another world and everything because we weren't from a good part, right? And when we went one time, I was with three of my friends, and one of my friends was like, oh, we should all go to a psychic while we're here in the French Quarter, right? Because they have a bunch of psychics lined up, right? And so I was like, nah, I'm good. Um... Like, I don't even really believe in, in, in psychics. And even if I did, I don't know if I want to know, right? Like, I, I'm all right. And he's like, no, come on, it'll be fun. Let's do it, right? So sure enough, he convinces all, all three of us to go ahead and do it. And there's lots of different psychics lined up. There's some people that are, like, reading palms. There's some people that have tarot cards. There's some people that are just staring at you like, oh, man. <laughs> And so, you know, I sit down, I sat at a tarot table, right? And I don't know anything about tarot cards at all. Like, I don't know what the process is or anything. But I went ahead and I paid the lady, because you got to pay up front, right? They can't just be like, here's the future now. (laughs) And so I went ahead and paid and everything. And then she started, like, like dealing, right? And so, and I, I didn't know, so I did, when she had dealt a cup, I just scooped up a couple. And said, <laughs> Cause I don't know how to play, right? <laughs> and then she was like, don't do that. <laughs> And so then she 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 redealt and I kept my hands to myself this time. She and then she got to there was one car she got to where she just went, hmm, ooh. <laughs> she went, ooh, and then scooped up all the cards, grabbed her tablecloth, and walked away. <laughs> I was like, that's not, you can't just you can't, I paid you for five dollars worth of future. You gotta say something. <laughs> That's that you can't just walk off. What? Cause now I feel crazy cause I just paid five dollars to believe in that now. I don't know what she saw. <laughs> My friends are next to me, they all getting their palms. Oh yeah, yeah. Then they get done. And they're like, what about you? I'm like, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know anything because she walked away. She can't just... And they were like, oh, maybe she was a scammer. I was like, maybe. (laughs) She didn't even try. It's the the future. You don't know. You don't... I can't prove. Do you know what I mean? Make something up. Some, even if you saw something terrible, lie to me. I won't know. <laughs> and so then they were like, oh, well, you know, stuff happens. There's just five bucks. I was like, nah. Nah. So I sat down with another psychic. I was like, hey, can you help me? Because, and she's like, what are you, what are you looking for? What do you know? I'm like, no, no, none of that. I need you to find... <laughs> I need you to track down one of one of you so then you can tell me what she saw. <laughs> you know like in the 80s movies when somebody would get in the cab and they'd be like, follow that car. I was doing that. <laughs> but with the psych, because I was like, you need to track her because she walked off with a tablecloth and everything. I don't think she's coming back. Like, I need you to see what she saw to just... And she was like, oh, it doesn't work like that. I was like, how does it work? <laughs> We are dealing with an emergency here. Cause she didn't just go, look, she was like, ugh, like <laughs> it doesn't look ambiguous what's about to happen next. You need to know what it is. There's there's an interesting thing that's happened over the past like two years, I'd say, where everyone has has built out categories for people who are famous, right? So there are some people that are like that old Hollywood type of famous that's kind of disappearing. You may never get another one of these again. Like like Brad Pitt level famous, right? 
Like, we don't know if that'll ever happen again because the internet has split us so much that, like, there's very few hardcore blockbuster movies that just everyone went to see. And when they are happening, it's, like, still factions of people. And it's not the same actors in the same movies every time. So, like, the closest we've probably got is, like, Timothy Chalamet. You know what I mean? Like, he was in Wonka and then Dune 2 and, you know. And then something else at the same time. It was just, it felt like, Everybody in Hollywood. I remember that time because for the, those period of months when I was going to the movies, it felt like everybody else in Hollywood got sick. And it just, <laughs> it felt like they just kept calling, like, no, we need you to do it. Or the movie won't come out. He's like, okay, then he's Walker, then I know where he's a friend. And he's like, you know, it's like, <laughs> it was just a lot, right? And, and then you have people who are like, yeah, that old Hollywood famous. Then you have people who are more like, um, like like internet famous in a, in a way that may stick or may not stick. So you have people that have like millions and millions of, of followers on Instagram or on YouTube or whatever. So they're, they're technically as famous, if not more famous than the old Hollywood people, right? Because these people were picked by the people, you know what I mean? Whereas the other people's sort of their success feels like studio, feels like, you know, a machine driving it or something. And then you also have lengths, right? Like lengths of fame. So there are some people that are famous the way that, like, they will be as famous as long as, like, a turtle lives. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, they'll be famous for so long that they'll actually die and still be famous after they're dead because people keep watching their movies and they're in cl classics and stuff. So it's like those, like, Marlon Brando types and stuff like that, where even if you don't know who they are, even if you can't picture it, you know what they've created, you know a part of what they did while they were here, you know? And then there's people that are famous for a shorter amount of time. It's still substantial, but it's not the same amount. So people that are famous like lifespan of a dog. <laughs> like it's still, it's still quite a bit of time. You know, there are people who were like super famous in the 90s who are less famous now, but if you saw them in a grocery store, you'd be like, ah! Don't move, don't move. <laughs> you, you were in something. You were in, I know your fate, you were in something. <laughs> and then there are people that are famous for like the lifespan, and this is, this is sadly most of fame. There are people that are famous for the lifespan of like a goldfish. is here and gone right if you blink you'll miss it they were famous for like a week you know they really subscribe to that 15 minutes in a sense you know because you don't even really remember why they were famous and then someone has to like go on and on about the thing that they did like i don't, I don't know her name and it's not i'm not picking on her or anything but I, just as an example it's like that one girl that was on tiktok that hit her hip on the bed post it was like ah! and it's like <laughs> I don't know who she is. I don't know where she is. She could be here. But I wish her well. I'm not, I'm not saying this as in like a, it's a dig on her. I'm just saying that that's what happens. Is that now that algorithms are ruling the world and, and ruling how we see the world, how we see perspective from other people and how we like take in any form of media, right? I think that those are like the three levels, you know? So there are people who you think are going to be goldfish, and then they end up being dogs. <laughs> and we haven't lived long enough to see if a goldfish is ever going to become a turtle. <laughs> but it's, it's like here today, gone tomorrow, and it'll sweep, it'll sweep the entire country. It might sweep the world for like a week or months. You don't know when it's going to end, right? Like I can't tell... If the hot to a girl is a goldfish. <laughs> or like a dog, right? Because like, because this is my thing. Okay, if, if somehow, if somehow you don't know the phenomenon that is the hot to a girl, 
basically, very quickly, it's, it's something that took over the world for some reason. <laughs> Where, you know, people do those street interviews on Instagram and YouTube and TikTok and stuff. And basically they walked up to this one young lady who was out with her friend. And they were like, what's one thing that drives a man wild? And she was like, you got to go hot to and spit on that thing, right? <laughs> and in a few sentences, she captured the hearts. the hearts and minds of America <laughs> in a way that sadly a president never could. And I think one of the reasons she blew up, because a lot of people accused her of being a plant or this being like some, some weird thing as soon as it happened. But I think that one of the things that propelled her to where she is now and what pushed her in so many different algorithms, because she blew up on Twitter, on TikTok, on Instagram, on YouTube. And then there were like derivative things of her after the fact. And then people were trying to figure out who she was, all, all this stuff, right? And I think that it's because most of what creates anything and, and what drives algorithms is discussion. Right? If you can get people to argue, you're getting people to comment. If you're getting people to comment, this soulless, faceless algorithm just sees that a lot of people are talking about it. So then it pushes it to more people to talk about. Because all they want is your attention. They just want to keep you where you are right now in your phone. Right? So then people saw it, and then there were people who immediately hated her. Like, just in a way that's, that's like... Not, and this isn't a soapbox thing. Just I'm saying I witnessed it. They hated her in a way that we only seem to hate women online. They hated her so much. And I think a lot of people hated her because she was right. <laughs> well, but I don't know. I mean, some people hated her immediately and some people loved her immediately. Some people thought she was the most endearing, so sweet, so funny, so genuine, because that's another thing that people are attracted to in, in, in a world that feels like everyone has a very cold and calculated outreach plan or, or way to get you to buy something or way to keep your attention. It just felt like somebody walk up to her and she talked and she had fun. She was out all night with her friend and then she left. Right. And I think that that level of being genuine really captured people in that moment. Right. And so now, and, and I don't know where she goes from here. Apparently she's like getting a show and apparently there's going to be like, I don't know, a bunch of stuff that happens. There's already people who have like paid her to appear and stuff like that. And then you saw people get mad about that. There were some people that were like, that's so unfair. She was just talking and now all of a sudden she has stuff and then that kept it going. And people don't seem to realize that like what keeps her going is us talking. Not in a bad way. I'm not saying a diss on her or anything. I'm just saying even right now what I'm doing is keeping her <laughs> in the algorithm forever. <laughs> Like I, like I do, I do wish her well, though, because I think that especially if you are at like, sadly, if you're at like a goldfish level of fame, you don't really know why you're here. <laughs> kind of like the goldfish in the bowl that's swimming in a circle. Not really sure where it's going or if it can go anywhere or just, I'm just here, you know. I used to be at a fair and now I'm at this dude's house. You know? <laughs> Cause when you, when you aren't known for a thing, when there's not, at least the, we used to have these turtles because we used to prop up people who were famous as these demigods. And we still do it. We do it in different ways now because now there isn't just like old celebrity. Now there's like digital creator. There's influencer. There's all these different people. But we still do it to people where we like deify them in real time, right? And I think that before it was always attached to a skill. So it was always like Marlon Brando is the most brilliant actor of all time. Orson Welles is this incredible director, right? All of these people are absolutely deified in their skill and what they do. So then even the people that want to reach their heights, whether it's fame or just skill, they want to get to that level. And it's something that may never be achievable, right? 
And then when you're like dog famous, you just, people stop calling, right? Like, it's like I was available for parts, but I don't know. Like I didn't, I didn't want to take the steroids. So then Marvel was like, no. You know, and I, and I, I, I wish, I wish her well, because I think that it's a terrifying thing to just have everybody think they can get something from you or want some, want something from you immediately. And you don't really know why, right? And you don't know how to keep what you got. Maybe you can turn it into something, you know, like who knows? May, maybe I is an actress now. Like I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe it is a start to something or made her, maybe it just petered out because, you know, that's, that was a moment in time, right? Because it's just hard. Because then, because then if you're, if you're out one day, if like, no one talks about that, no one talks about what becoming like unfamous is, you know, people, people that are famous actually, then they turn to becoming infamous just to keep some level of normalcy of where they were. Right. That's why sometimes I, in my opinion, you see people who used to be more famous, all of a sudden they lose their minds. Right. Like you'll just, you'll just be on Twitter one day and see like Randy Quaid said something. <laughs> And you're like, okay, all right, that's what he's up to now, all right. <laughs> no, no, because it, I think if you don't really know why you're there and if people aren't actually around you, protecting you, nurturing you, and taking care of you, right? Because we don't, I mean, unless, unless she's here, we don't know hock to a girl, like just, <laughs> we, don't, we don't know what she wants out of all this or something. It was sort of thrust upon her. And she said, she's like, I quit my job immediately and I just started taking meetings and stuff. And I'm like, good for you, but also like, be careful. You know what I mean? Because if you don't know why you're here, you don't know how to stay. And then you get treated like a goldfish after. After a couple of weeks and you get, you know, next thing you know, that's not, that's not a regular bowl. It's a, it's a, And by the way, I hope that doesn't happen. I hope that she gets to use whatever springboard she wants or like landing pad that that improves her life. Because also she didn't necessarily sign up for this thing. Somebody just asked her, what, what makes a man go crazy in bed? And then she knew, so then she answered, right? Like that's... <laughs> I went to a, um, years ago, when I was with my friends back home in Louisiana, uh, I went to a buffet. And this is a buffet before COVID, right? <laughs> so this is a buffet that we just didn't know was nasty yet, right? Like, <laughs> like COVID, you know, just gives you a different perspective on things that are like communal, right? Because, because, a buffet is just family style eating, but it's with the public. <laughs> Cause you've had meals, you've had meals with your family before. And then you got that one cousin that's nasty, right? So then, so then you're like, can someone please pass the mashed potatoes? And then they get ready to pass the mashed potatoes. You're like, Ooh, not you. Right. <laughs> and then they grab the bowl and go to pass you, but they got their thumb in the bowl <laughs> so they can get some grip on it. Right. And then you're like, don't do that. You know what I mean? Like that's, <laughs> scoop it up, grab it from the bottom, hand it to me. Cause now it's thumb potatoes. <laughs> so that's what it is. There's a buffet is just, you know, with everybody. And I even tried to give a buffet a shot post COVID. And I'm, to be fair, maybe I wasn't being fair. Maybe I judged too quickly, but I basically walked in and somebody who wasn't even at the food, just somebody at a table coughed. And I was like, forget this, this is. <laughs> No, but 
this is years ago. I was in Louisiana with a few of my friends and went to this uh, buffet. Now, this buffet did something special where basically they had the whole buffet and you could pay for that or you could get a box. And if you got a box, it was a lot of the things that were at the buffet you could pick and choose, but it was, it was food that came out of the kitchen, right? So it didn't feel like you were participating. <laughs> and so I would always get a box and there was one day they had a special, right? So you could get a box and then for a dollar, you could get double meat, which I realize now as an adult is not a deal. <laughs> because meat should never be a dollar, right? Like, <laughs> cause you, you told me the whole box was $13. And then they were like, for one dollar, we'll just double it up. <laughs> that means that all the meat is 50 cents. <laughs> These margins are too tight for you to just be giving away all this meat for a dollar, right? This is horse. It has to be. <laughs> all the meats that I know of cost a little bit of money, right? This... And so I was young and I... I was naive, and so I was like, ooh, hit me with that double meat. <laughs> and so sure enough, they give me the box. It's got, it's packed, it's packed, right? And there's a t just a ridiculous amount of meat, uh, a bed of rice, some veggies on the side, and like a little treat in one of the little compartments, right? And so we all sit down to eat, and I am loving life because I'm eating like a king for like $13 had a coupon <laughs> and everything's well and good we even leave and about 40 minutes later I I get a pain <laughs> but the pain is is the pain is key. the pain is not in my chest or my stomach. The pain is like in the middle, like right here, which is terrifying. Cause I was like, I shouldn't get this till I'm 58. Like this is, <laughs> this is too specific of a spot. Like it needs to be like, you know, like head, shoulder, you know what I mean? Like you, all the pain should have a section, right? And like, it either needs to be stomach ache or heart attack. I don't want whatever this is. <laughs> This is an insane region to have this much pain. And so then I'm doing all types of weird movements trying to like make the pain decide where to go. Like I'm trying to either push it up or knock it down or something like. I'm cramping up, but it's like right, it's right here. And I've never felt anything like that before. And so then I, I have like a little I don't know, I do some, some motion and the pain just gets even, even tighter here, right? And, and then it starts to hit my stomach and so I run. I didn't even know I was fast. I run. <laughs> I run to the bathroom, right? And I, I run to the bathroom and I'm glad nobody was in that one because I kicked the stall door open, right? <laughs> Cause we're, we're in crunch time. This isn't a, no, 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 no. Yeah. I mean, like we're pushing at least. Right. And so I run up and I kick the stall door open, which you should never do because those stall doors bounce back. Right. So, so I kick and boom and boom and boom. And then I get up off the floor. Right. And, And I get, I get in the stall and then I sit down and it's still just like, it's all right here. And I'm like, I'm like tearing up. It hurts so bad. I don't know. I can't even describe it cause I've never felt anything like it since. And I'm just like, I'm still trying to do the movements, like push the pain to make sense. You know what I mean? And then, and I've been praying by the way, I've been praying for like, <laughs> I've been praying for a long time because you don't, okay. You ever, you ever in the bathroom and you start to pray, but you're not even praying about anything related to what you ate. You're like, you're praying about something you might have got away with when you were little. And you were like, Lord, I'm sorry I took it. I didn't think they'd notice. I, I, it's my bad. I won't do it again. Just, that's got to be what this is about because this is too specific. This, this is like an inch below the nipples pain. 
just hurting, right? And then, then I can't help it. I'm like audibly making noise. I'm like, oh, 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 I think this is what the psychic saw. <laughs> I'll be honest with y'all, I, I don't smoke weed, but I let people think I do, because it makes me make more sense to people. <laughs> like if I told you my thoughts and you knew I was sober, you'd be like, ooh, uh, is he slow or something? What's going on? Here? But if I told you my thoughts and you thought I was high, you'd be like, he really on to something. I like how he came in. That's fire right there. <laughs> I'll give you an example right now. Like, I, would, I wish I could talk to bugs. <laughs> and not all the animals. I'm not trying to get input from everybody, just bugs. Because <laughs> I feel like it would save a lot of lives, you know. Because how many times have you been at home chilling and in the corner of the room you just hear... <laughs> <laughs> but if you could talk to bugs, if you could be like, hey, bruh, no. <laughs> Not tonight. I'm not in the mood. I'm gonna open the window. I'm gonna need you to leave. And then he'd be like, mm, sorry. But because we don't speak their language, it's just every time. It's just murders in your house. Let's say you bring somebody home. You have a date. Date's going well. Date comes back with you your place. You in the Netflix portion of the Netflix and chill. You got the arm around y'all making out and then just a cockroach walk out <laughs> to the middle of the room. If you could just be like, Carl, Carl, no. <laughs> Not tonight. I got company here. Come on now. Come on, bro. He'd be like, I'm sorry. I'm, that's my bad. <laughs> Even she'd be understanding. She'd be like, he had no way of knowing I was coming. That's <laughs> It happens. If I could talk to bugs, first bug that I talk to would be a praying mantis. I just walk up to him and be like, she ain't good for you, dog. <laughs> nah, don't do this. You and the boys for a little while. She just using you for your body, okay? <laughs> no, no, not even sex. You got a tasty ass head. <laughs> And she wants to eat you. I watch, I watch the news sometimes when I'm like not depressed enough, you know? <laughs> you know, sometimes you're having a good day, you turn on the news, you're like, let's see who else is having a good day. And the news is like, nobody. <laughs> nobody having a good day. Everybody dies. <laughs> so I turn on the news and I saw... Uh, Kamala Harris was in Jakarta and she was in an interview with a journalist and during the interview the journalist asked her if she would be ready, willing and able to take up the office of president if Biden was for whatever reason incapacitated and she said yes and it was just too quick that was <laughs> that's way too fast and don't get me wrong that's literally her job her job to be there in case he not there she there right that's her whole job, but she said yes, like she been dropping banana peels at the White House for years. <laughs> That's way too fast. She said yes, like every time by get all some steps, her mouth water, just like, oh, okay, it's the day. All right, I'm gonna get my promotion. <laughs> oh, he about to miss that third step. Let me get the right pantsuit on. <laughs> she said it like just anytime she's walking down the stairs behind him, she sees her hair shaking, like she about to lean forward. <laughs> I could be a world leader. <laughs> and you could tell, she could tell she said yes too fast. Because she said, yeah. so then he asked her, she was like, yes, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and so then she started backtracking, which just made it sound worse. She was like, I, I, I'm just answering your hypothetical. Like, you the one over here asking a question about, but I'm stronger than ever. <laughs> All right, calm down. <laughs> Um, do y'all see that they want to 
impeach Biden now. You see, they're trying to open the investigation and impeach Biden. It's starting to feel like if you don't get impeached, you weren't really president. Like this, uh, this started to feel like street cred for presidents. You know what I mean? Uh, they want to impeach you. Here's, here's my thing about Biden. And calm down, because I can already feel it. <laughs> For real, for real. Like, I said two words that already people were like, what? Like, it was... To, this is what's so annoying about being American right now. You get, like, two words in and people try to suss out where you are. Like, we haven't done that since the Civil War. Like, chill out. I said two things. I just said, here's my thing about Biden. To me, I could feel y'all's eyes on me like, oh, I didn't know they invited Candace Owens' brother to do a set. <laughs> No, no, just here's, here's my thing about Biden. I don't, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like if you show me evidence, I'll consider something. I'm not a biased person. Maybe he doing everything that the Republicans say he doing, but when we look over at him, he just look tired. Like, I just, he doesn't look, I mean, I'm not even saying he can't be corrupt. I'm saying he doesn't look capable right now. He look... You know, maybe he's the worst criminal that we've ever had in the office, but when you look over at him, he just looked like the Snoop Dogg of soup. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, everything Snoop Dogg did for weed, Biden doing for soup right now. Like, you know, he making soup cool. He trying to get the kids into soup. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> um, it, just feels, it feels odd, you know, because it's like maybe he's a criminal mastermind, but it feels like he's just hanging on. <laughs> You know what I mean? That's a grandpa, and we put him to work. That's, that we did that, you know? You can't possibly believe that Biden is this criminal mastermind, but then also, anytime he make it through a speech, we're like, that was pretty good. That was, I don't know. No, he really crushed that. He didn't slip on any of the S's. That was well done, well done. You know what I mean? There was a couple T's, and he stuck them like Simone Biles. I'm really proud of it. Well done. No, there is one thing I will say, honestly, that Biden will be doing that's not on the up and up. If you watch as many press conferences as I watch with Biden talking, to, it's only when they ask him a good ass question, he start acting senile. I'm not going to lie. Like anytime they got a good ass question dead to rights, that's when he start talking about Disneyland <laughs> and hanging out on Mars with Larry Bird. I'm like, you were fine a second ago. Like, <laughs> You know, this feels weird. I don't know why more world leaders don't do that. You know, a lot of them old just start doing the Biden card. You get in trouble. That's what Putin should do. <laughs> Think about it. Putin would buy a lot of goodwill if he just fell down a flight of steps every day. <laughs> if every day for a month, Putin just, oop, oop, like just every day. You'd be catching people a month from now being like, he's a fucking war criminal. And we'd be like, yeah, but it looked like he got bad knees. Leave him alone. <laughs> they, try to, they try to interview him. They're like, why are you still laying siege to Ukraine? And he's like, Ukraine? Is that one of my grandbabies? Like, oh, okay. <laughs> and they're even coming for Hunter now. You saw Hunter got indicted. That's wild. As, oof, they really coming for the Bidens hard, you know. I love Hunter. I really do. I really do. No, no, hear me out. I do. I love Hunter because I'm just so glad that the first person to smoke crack in the White House was white. That's, that's beautiful. That's absolutely incredible. Especially if you know the history of crack in the U.S., you're like, wow, yes. Thank goodness. It really makes the White House to crack relationship feel like it's come full circle now. Yeah? <laughs> I am disappointed, though. I'm not going to lie to you. I wish, I, I really do wish that Hunter would just get Joe to smoke crack. <laughs> that would be the most fire presidency of all time. I know nobody's on board with this, but hear me out, okay? First of all, Biden will never fall again, all right? Crackheads do not fall, okay? You could push Biden and he still hit an angle. Like, it's like, I'm telling you, he'd never go down again. You'd never have to worry. He would skip steps on the way up. My man would be fucking feeling himself. 
You never have a boring press conference again. Biden press conferences are snooze fest right now. Just, uh, just uh, you know what I mean? Not on crack. Not on crack. Not on crack. He'd be like, what? What was that? <laughs> he got to scream because he sold the mic for money for more crack. But like, what was that? <laughs> and Republicans would love if Biden was on crack because he'd finally be as bad of a president as they've been saying he is. Republicans could finally be like, he sold Indiana for six dollars to China, all right? <laughs> what the fuck we gonna do? We got citizens over there. <laughs> and then as liberals, we would love if Biden was on crack. Cause we'd finally have a Trump. <laughs> you know what I mean? We act like we don't need a Trump, but we need one. We really do. As liberals, we need a Trump. We care about everybody feeling too much, but we get Biden smoking crack, Joe just going off, he not in control what he's saying, we'd finally have a bully on our side, you know? Marjorie Taylor Greene be up there like, Joe Biden, you're a piece of shit. And then Joe, fully cracked out. <laughs> fully cracked out. It's like, oh, Mar I'm a piece of shit? Well, you a lonely bitch. Aren't you getting divorced this year? <laughs> Hope those conspiracy theories could keep you warm, lonely bitch. <laughs> oh, be incredible. You would have to, like, rein him in, though. You'd see... You see Joe trying to try to wash the windshields of Air Force One. <laughs> Mr. President, get down. Get down right now. <laughs> oh, it would be dope, man. How do I put this? I've, I've, I'll be honest with you, I've watched some porn before in my life. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And this is my thing. <laughs> Porn, it gives people unrealistic expectations, you know what I mean? And we all know what they say about men, that porn gives men unrealistic expectations of sex. Because porn makes men think, oh, if I just touch her elbow with my penis, she gonna lose it. You know what I mean? Like, if I just touch you, I'm like, ah! Like, it's... Thank you. But it's not, it's not just for men, it's for everyone. Porn gives everyone unrealistic expectations of sex, you know? Like it makes men think that the sex, they're about to be sex gods. And it makes women think that the sex is about to be like good or whatever, you know what I mean? <laughs> Everybody's gonna be disappointed. What, what an incredible day. It's been beautiful outside. It's a real... Yeah, no, you can clap. This is, this is big for us because we had a, a whole ass hurricane this weekend. This, that was crazy. That, it was so... New York should... Th this is already a dirty place. This is already a disgusting city. This place should never be wet. That was... That was unacceptable. Like when I, even when I looked outside, I was like, there's a whole lot of stuff out there right now that should not be getting wet, right? And then I had to run. So I, I was, I was going to be late for a spot. So I was running, right? And as I was running, I almost slipped. And if I had fallen, <laughs> if I had fallen on the wet New York pavement, if I had fallen on the somehow warm water, <laughs> I don't even think I would have not, I, I think I would have killed myself. I think that that, that, that was on my last thread. I've been, I've been reading the news and I saw this story that's captivated me. It was a British Airways pilot that got fired because they caught him the night before. He had done a, a bunch of cocaine off of a stripper's titty. I know. Some of y'all are like, awesome. <laughs> and I read the whole story, and when I got done reading the story, I had lots of questions. First question, why is the titty part of the story? That feels, you know what I mean? That feels like the least consequential part. The titty did nothing wrong. Like, it was just being there for a good time and everything. And second, is that why they fired him? They, did they go to him they were like, you don't even do it all flat surfaces. You're not responsible with your cocaine. How can we put lives in your hands when you're this reckless with your cocaine? You know when you put on the titty, you lose at least half. <laughs> Third question that it brought up for me. 
is flying a plane low-key easy? How are pilots this comfortable getting this blazed all the time? It's like, this story happens like once a month. Pilots get caught being drunk and being high or whatever. I have a theory, and this is a conspiracy theory that just I have, and I know I don't expect you to believe what I'm about to say. I just think this, okay? You know like when you're getting off a flight and you're walking to the front and the pilot is standing there, just standing in front of the cockpit. You know that weird thing they do? It's really awkward. They're like waiting for some sort of attaboy or something. It's like, it's honestly the thirstiest thing I've ever seen. Like they just, they just land the plane and now they're like, oh, did you, did you like that? That was me. That was... They, like pilots in front of the cockpit after the flight look like dudes before Tinder. Just like, what do you think of me? <laughs> so anyway, when you look past them, which I always do, when you look right past them into the cockpit, you can see all the, these like little switches, all these levers in the cockpit, all these little lights, all these labels. I think, just me, I think, none of that shit work. <laughs> That's all for show. That's not real. There's a, there's a button under their seat that says fly, and they hit that. That's how the plane takes off. Otherwise, I can't believe they're this comfortable being drunk, you know? Because I think it must just be an easy job. Everybody here knows, everyone here knows, somebody with an easy job that is high for that job 100% of the time. I got five friends that are dog walkers. They're on the moon half the week. <laughs> all they got to do is walk. Yep. All right. You don't even need to give them a direction. Just they walk until the dog is tired. These dogs look like tortilla chips, by the way, to them. <laughs> They're very high. I don't know. Just maybe you don't need to fire them. Did they really need to fire them? No. Ask yourself truly. Well, if he fly better on cocaine, did anybody ask that? Well, if he's a better pilot, well, if he does a little cocaine and then he's up there alert, just dodging clouds. <laughs> Let them be, let them be, if it's an easy job, let them be drunk and high. Just knock $200 off my ticket. That's all I ask. I'll take a drunk discount. I don't care. You know? That's the other thing. You know, we narrowly missed it by like two hours. There was almost a government shutdown. There was almost a whole government shutdown, which is crazy. We send them to do government. We send these people to do government and they're so bad doing government, they almost didn't have money for government. And then they still weren't going to be fired. You know what I mean? When there's a government shutdown, they just take a vacation and then come back and work it out. It's insane. And they still get paid. They mismatch this shit so badly that it has to shut down and they still get paid. It's the government workers that don't get paid, you know? Federal workers have to get furloughed. They don't, they don't get any pay. FAA up there doing their job, hoping they'll get paid later. TSA doesn't get paid. If you think TSA are some bastards now, <laughs> Imagine them showing up knowing they're not getting paid. If you are not getting paid to do TSA and you still show up, you're doing it for the love of the game, all right? <laughs> you're doing it because you like fucking up people's flights. That's, that's the whole real... Oh, this bitch thinks she's going to Aruba. All right, not today. Not on my watch. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I can't stand them. They're the worst. They really are. They always asking me dumbass questions. You know, you'll be in line. They'll grab your bag, be like, why is there so much lotion in this bottle? It's like, that's how it came. Don't act like I'm being weird. That's, that's how much Aveeno CVS sells. I didn't make the lotion. Just throw it away if you need to. They be holding it up like, he's got lotion. Why does he have so much lotion? Questions need to be answered. Like, oh my God. I can't stand it. That's the thing. That's how you know nobody cares about your safety in reality. <laughs> nobody cares. Nobody at the airport cares. Pilot is drunk. <laughs> and the TSA is just, they say they're looking for bombs, but they're just taking menial shit off you. They're like, why is your comb so sharp? It's like, oh my God. <laughs> they like, I, I, trying to check if everything is a bomb, but then they still, still will let an airport have a Taco Bell. It's like, what about those ass bombs you're sending in the air? <laughs> That's crazy. They just, it's wild. Cause what if something happens? Like the Spain plane, remember the Spain plane? Do y'all know about, if, okay, in case you don't know about the Spain plane, there was a plane on its way to Spain months ago that had to turn around halfway there cause somebody shit the plane, all right? And I, no, the plane got bathrooms. They weren't like hold it until you get to Spain. Someone shit the plane, all right? That's crazy. 
CNN reported it. That's how big of a story it was. They had to divert. People were like, is there a terrorist on? It's like, kinda. Like, it was absolutely crazy. Someone went to college, studied journalism, then got a job at CNN. And at 8 o'clock on my TV, they were like, somebody shut the plane. Somebody. That's why. I, I feel like, just roll with me here for a second. Just stick with me. I feel like the world would be a better place if more women punched people. Because I feel like there's a show. There's a show that I watched. I was raised by three women, so I watched a lot of Lifetime, all right? And there was a show on Lifetime called Snapped. If you haven't heard of it, it's a show about women killing their husbands, all right? And, uh, and just so you know, there's 28 seasons, so women, women have been cooking, okay? Anyway, I bring all this up because I watch a lot of Snap because I was raised by these three women always watching Lifetime, so then I'm watching and I'm just looking for all the men's mistakes. I'm just like, all right, good to know. <laughs> But honestly, a lot of the episodes, if y'all have watched the show, the day they kill the husband, sometimes he didn't do anything that day. You know what I mean? He was just like, hey, babe, where's the... <laughs> just a couple punches and this whole shit could have been avoided. You know what I mean? Just letting it build up. It's not good. You know? I'm very worried, too. I, I worry about the economy more and more every day. Not just because I'm getting older and I finally have started to understand it, like, genuinely. Like, a lot of this does not make sense. Like, a lot of what we're doing. I know we all watch the big short and everything, but, like, this is, this is actually bad, what's happening. Like, I know the economy is getting worse and worse because more and more of my Uber drivers have been white. And this is terrifying all right is the economy in shambles what's happening what is do you know the terror that goes through my heart when i open up uber and it says spencer will be there in three minutes i'm like uh-uh no -uh. -uh. whatever happened to him is happening to me next week all right this is very bad and the worst part about having a white uber driver is their honesty you know, because I'm a jovial guy. I get in the car and I'm like, hey, how's it going? You know, white Uber driver tell you the truth. <laughs> they will. They'll let it all out. You know what I mean? I, I get it. Hey, how's it going? She took everything. Like, whoa. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> I did not know. I remember the first time it happened. I remember my first, I'll never forget my first white Uber driver. Tyler. <laughs> I got in the car. I was like, hey, man, how's it going? He's like, obviously not fucking well i'm like okay whoops my bad you all been great thank you so much i'm josh johnson cool <laughs> how y'all doing everybody good yeah. Yeah. Oh, sweet sweet um i i am not i i've been freaked out about getting older because sometimes you haven't changed you know you're the same as you've always been, but your friends around you. It's like your peers doing grown shit that makes you realize you're getting older. Like, my buddy bought a house, and I had to be like, hey, 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 we don't do that. <laughs> uh, my friends had a baby. They were so excited. They were the first in the friend group to have a baby. But they were so excited that they sent me a picture of them in the delivery room with the dad cutting the cord. And I was immediately upset. Like, in my head, I was like, why do we even let him do that? Think about it, this dude is cutting the finish line tape on a race he didn't run. This is wild. For all the labor, he was just standing there, and then last second, he's like, I helped. It's like, it's, it's not the same at all. She's been screaming for hours at the very end. He's like, me too, girl. <laughs> Shit, we did it, all right? No, I'm terrified of having kids because kids are creepy. You know how you know kids creepy? Nobody teach them how to be creepy and they're still creepy. Which means it's an A, you know? Anybody here who's met, babysat, a five or six year old has had that kid under the right lighting. Look at you, but do this. Like, who is this for? Who taught them this? They'll just stay at the end of a hallway and talk to you at the shine and be like, hi. Kids whisper at night. Have you heard? You can't get a kid to whisper during the day. And then at night, they're like, 
I had a bad dream. Get out of my face. Get out of my face. Get out of my face right now. Don't touch me, all right? It's creepy as hell. I'm terrified to be a dad, because I'm a dad, I'll be tired. Being a dad makes you tired. I'll be dead if I tuck my child in. I go to my room to rest my head on the pillow to get some Christian sleep. I want to be woken up in the middle of the night. There's a monster under my... I'm hitting them. I'm hitting them immediately, all right? I'm waking up swinging. This is the only situation where I feel like you gotta hit your kids because it's self-defense, okay? You're not gonna roll up on me in my sleep doing hard S's like that, you know? Just in my face in the middle of the night. I couldn't sleep. You're about to sleep forever, I promise you. Get away from me. Don't touch me. <laughs> Terrified. <laughs> I've been very excited. Very, very excited for October 24. Just not able to wait. Sleepless nights. Getting ready for October 24. If you don't know, October 24th is when Britney Spears' book comes out. <laughs> My man, like this, this is the thing, this is the thing. I, I'm fascinated. I wasn't even like a big free Britney person. I'm not into pop stars that much or anything. But Britney Spears is one of the most mistreated celebrities that we have in modern times, all right? And there's a lot of people, if you do them wrong, they try to get back at you immediately, right? You do them wrong, they key a car. They go on Instagram Live talking about, oh, you know. She didn't do that. She said, you know what? I'ma wait. I'ma wait like two decades. <laughs> and then one random day in October, <laughs> I'ma dance with knives. <laughs> and I'm gonna write a book. <laughs> and wow, yeah, amazing. Apparently, so there's, there's a lot of revelations in the book, but one of them that, that really shook me was that she had uh, uh, a wild fling with Colin Farrell, right? And it was after her and Justin broke up and everything, and I can't, I can't remember exactly how she described it, but the words used in the book was like, the, the fling was nothing less than just a sexual brawl. That, those were her words. <laughs> I've never had sex so good somebody wrote about it. You know what I mean? That's... And the fact that she was like, it was just, we were just at each other all the time. It was just, the passion was like a street fight. I was like, God damn. <laughs> Gotta step my game up. <laughs> I, I love doing comedy because I, I love making people laugh. When you laugh, you, you're letting yourself be yourself, you know? When you're tr genuinely laughing, you're not thinking about anything, you're not feeling pain, you're just enjoying yourself, you know? And I also love doing comedy because I'll say the thing that we all think, but you're not supposed to say. You know what I mean? Like, y'all won't say it, because y'all are good people. <laughs> In fact, after I'm done, you might leave and be like, I would have never said that. <laughs> and you're right, that's why I say it. It's like my job to say it. I'll give you an example right now. I hope everybody that I love dies in the order I love them. That would be, that would be incredible. That would truly be fire. Don't act like y'all have rankings. Don't do that. There's a couple, you know. I got a family member, she loved to call me to tell me who died. That's all she, she call me. She, and she doesn't care. As soon as she knows, I know. She'll call me in the middle of my work day. It'll be 1.59 on a Wednesday. Can't wait. Calls me up. Are you sitting down? Are you sitting down always means dead, by the way. That's not... You're not being mysterious. I'm not like, whoa, what? It's like it's, no, it always means dead. No one's ever like, are you sitting down? Because you just won the lottery. It's, it's not happening. No? Are you sitting down? And so I'm, I'm like, just tell me who, who it is. And she's like, your cousin Willie. And she doesn't know I'm on the other end of the phone. Like, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> <sighs> okay, because she doesn't know Willie not even in the top 30, all right? Like, that's good. Willie can go, okay? This could have been a text message if I'm being honest with you. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
<laughs> and you know what? That, that's the other thing too. Willie wasn't even dead. <laughs> right? I know. For nothing. Willie, Willie wasn't even dead. Basically, Willie was at her house and he, he ate a bunch of the, grown man by the way, ate a bunch of the melatonin gummies thinking they were regular gummies. So he's snacking on these gummies while he watched an NBA draft and put himself 86 gummies deep into a coma. This man was chumping and chumping and then had the nap of a lifetime. That's why I don't like Willie to begin with. He's a knucklehead, you know what I mean? Like, he's one of the dumbest people I ever met. I, I, uh, I had never wanted to necessarily get into martial arts. When I was a little kid, I was hoping I would grow enough to be a big enough man that nobody would mess with me. You know what I mean? Like, when I was little, I was like, there's still time. I'm eating my greens, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going. So it works for Popeye, it'll work for me, you know? And then at 19, I was like, yep, I am done cooking. I need to come up with a plan or something, because right now, I'm very movable, okay? This is unacceptable. And so I started doing jujitsu. Um, and if you don't know what jujitsu is, it's a martial art, and it's also the only time straight men are allowed to hug. Uh, <laughs> And I started doing jujitsu, and there was a kid. Okay, so I'm a white belt, right? After two years, I'm still white belt, so I'm not good. I'm, I'm actually pretty bad. And then they always have me roll. Roll is the sparring. They always have me roll with this kid, and he he 15, but he and he weirdly strong. I don't like it. It's like because he because you can t he look 15, but then he get a hold of you like oh my god, like he's, it's terrifying. He's strong as hell, and he's a blue belt, and they should he should be higher. That's unacceptable. They, they, I feel like they gaslight me keeping him blue because he doing, he doing high level stuff to me. It doesn't feel right. You know what I mean? Like, like it's, there's a very thin line in jujitsu from getting submitted and getting fucked. Like it's, it's, it's really bad. And so I had to quit doing jujitsu because last time, okay. So this is the last lesson that I did, right? Uh, so they had us, they were teaching us a drill, and they had us just roll with each other, right? And he got a hold of me quick, because like I said, he's strong, so he grabbed me. I was like, ah, you know? And then he had put me, so uh, imagine that the wall is the ground, okay? So he's on top of me, and then he had, he had moved me. He, he like, I'm not a flexible person, but he had pushed me to where I'm like, it's, so this, uh, uh, this is the base of what's happening, and he's on top of me. And so now I'm trying to push him off, but like, this is not a great position to be in. So then I'm over here just like, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> I'm not getting any track, like I can't get him off because he's strong. And I'm, ah, 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 ah. and then finally there was this moment, and ever, we've all had this moment where it's loud somewhere and then it gets quiet just in time for you to get embarrassed. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You ever been at a club and then it's just, in between songs, it's quiet for a second and everybody hears you go, my tampon! Like that's, <laughs> that's basically what happened. So I'm over here fighting for my life, right? I'm just like over here, <laughs> nonstop. And then I know where I'm like, <laughs> and like, <laughs> It shouldn't have been quiet. Everybody was making noise a second before that. And then he get quiet and then he stop and he get up. And then everybody's looking at me like I brow belted myself. And, and he's like, are, are you, you, uh, you good? Uh, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. Let, let's roll. And he's like, nah, I'm all right. <laughs> I had to leave class. I was so embarrassed. I left early and I just decided, all right, I'm done with jujitsu. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna buy a gun. Like, <laughs> anybody want to press with me? They can catch his lead. Yeah. <laughs> we uh, we have it happening again. You know, I've been dreading this towards the end of the year. Next year, 2024, we unfortunately have another presidential election. Why are we still doing this? <laughs> We've proven the president can basically be dead and we will still function like normal. I don't know why we're still putting up this charade. I don't know about him. <laughs> 
What are you doing? I was talking to my friend about it because I've been dreading it so much. And um, my friend said something interesting. He said, you can tell who's going to win by who has the most mockable voice. Right? So like Barack Obama had a more mockable voice than John McCain. Trump had a more mockable voice than Hillary. But then it falls apart. Because I don't think Biden has a more mockable voice than Trump. Trump's like an actual character. I have a different metric. I think... I think whoever's the freakiest wins. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, Barack and Michelle were laying it down way harder than John McCain and his wife. That was when Barack still had the good hips and everything. You know? And we know about all these, these porn stars that Trump has tried to smash, that he has smashed. You know, bigger freak than Hillary. And I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna go out on them and say it. I think Biden is a bigger freak than Trump. I do. <laughs> Remember when he started running and was smelling the back of everybody's necks? Remember that? We had to beg him to stop. We were like, Joe, nobody does this. This is insane. Y'all remember what I'm talking about. He would just be up on somebody like. <laughs> Doing that weird ass whisper, just like. I just. <laughs> That's some good neck meat you got. <laughs> I used to be one of these dudes that was like, I'm never getting married. Never. Like, when I was 20, I was like, I'm never getting married. I can't even imagine why would anybody do that, whatever, right? And then I, I worked at a bar when I was 20. And so a lot of the people that came to the bar and a lot of people that I worked with were older than me. But now that I'm older, they're middle-aged, right? So I see what happens when you keep that attitude, like, I'm just never getting married. No, not me, bachelor for life. I've seen it now, and it's not good. It's actually pretty bad. You know, we need to work on interpersonal skills, love each other, find somebody, and make it work, because this is, this is rough out here. They're not doing well. Because this is the thing. No matter who you are, when you get married, marriage is you having a life partner you know what I mean? It's, it's you having someone that can look at you as you get older and be like, hey, that's weird. <laughs> Don't do that outside the house. <laughs> Don't embarrass me in front of other people because they know we're together, all right? <laughs> But if you don't have that, if you're not married and you don't have that, you just keep going through life and you get weirder and you think it's normal because you with you all day. So you were like, I think it's a good idea. Let's do it. And before you know it, you that weird dude. It's very upsetting, right? And this is the thing. This, this is the main way that I've, that I've watched it manifest is that, how do I put this? Okay, when you get older and you take all that unmarried energy and you put it into something. Most dudes put it into a passion or a hobby, right? Now, if your passion or hobby is useful to the world, then it's not a big deal. You know, if you do science and you're like, I'm never gonna get married, no, never. And then you just pour that into doing extra science. And then you discover something, people will be like, wow, what a brilliant man. <laughs> Thank goodness he dedicated his life to science. That's almost never happening. <laughs> Usually, you put it into a weird-ass hobby. <laughs> I, got, I got a friend. He put it all in, all that unmarried energy into scams. <laughs> That's all he does is scams now. And he can tell me about the scam. Okay, for, for all the fellas in here, do you know when you get the DM from the Instagram model with no followers and she needs money? <laughs> That's him. That's, that's him every time. He hitting everybody up. He got me. That's just, it's everybody. He's hitting them up. And I was like, who falls for this? And he's like, honestly, people that look like me. Like, it's, it's pretty wild. Reminds me of that dude. Do y'all see that dude? That dude that they caught, he had been faking heart attacks at all the restaurants. Okay, if you didn't see the story, basically this dude who looks like a walking heart attack. <laughs> was going to restaurants and faking heart attacks to get out of paying the bill. And he got off at like 19 different restaurants. They were just so thankful he didn't die in their booth that they were like, I guess you can just go, just please leave, don't die here, right? 
And then he finally got caught, and I feel like he got caught because that 20th restaurant was probably a Waffle House. <laughs> probably, probably his server would be like, uh uh, you ain't dying without tipping me. Get your ass up. Get your ass up. Or even worse, they tried to help him. Some big cook comes out of the kitchen, like, let me give him mouth to mouth. <laughs> He gets up, he's like, actually, no, I'm sorry, this is a scam. Please send me to jail. I, I apologize. But that's what happens. You put all that energy into something that's not productive and makes you weirder. Taking all that unmarried energy, you know. Like, I got a buddy, he, he's the only black ventriloquist I've ever met in my life, and it is so upsetting. This is an abomination, all right? This is so creepy, it's so, and he's not good. He's not good at all. We can all see him talking, we all see it. And then he making the doll move, but he can't stop looking at the doll too, so he's like, what's up, my boy? And this is, it's jarring. And honestly, also, real quick, I do owe white people an apology because I had always made fun of my white friends who were scared of dolls and thought they were too creepy and freaking and everything. And I get, now that there's one that looks like me, I get it. That's, that, this thing is disgusting. It's so, it's so freaky. It's just looking, his eyes and everything. I, I'm sorry, I judged too harshly. It's very creepy. But it's not just the dudes. A lot of the, a lot of the women that I know, middle-aged, you know, I ain't never getting married. And now, they all do one thing. They have different lives, different passions, careers, but they all do one thing. They be hugging me way too long. They be, they be doing these long ass hugs and they moan the whole hug. It's, you ever had one of those church hugs? You know what I'm talking about? Like, mm, sugar. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, how you been? How you been, baby? How you been? I even caught one of them. She was like, mm, how you been? <laughs> Y'all been great. Thank you so much.